My name is Rajiv Agarwal and I am from New Jersey. My question is on market timing. You have always said that it is impossible to time the markets. Yet, if we look at your track record, you have had amazing timings with some of your key decisions. You got out of the stock markets in 1969-70. You got back in 72-72-74 when the markets were really cheap. You did the same thing in 87, 99, 2000. And today, we are sitting on a significant amount of cash when the markets are going down. My question is, how do you time the big market moves so well? We'd like to offer you a job first. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. <laughs> the interesting thing is, uh, you know, obviously, we haven't the faintest idea what the stock market is going to do when it opens on Monday. We never have had. We have never made, Charlie and I, I don't think, in all the time we've worked together, and I'll tell you something later on maybe about how learning takes place, but I don't think we've ever made a decision that, that where either one of us either said or been thinking we should buy or sell based on what the market is going to do. Uh, no. Or for that matter, on, on what the economy is going to do. We, we don't know. And the interesting thing is, sometimes I get some credit someplace for the fact that, you know, how wonderful it was that we were optimistic in 2008 and when everybody was down on stocks and all that sort of thing. We, we spent a big percentage of our net worth at a very dumb time. <laughs> and and I, I shouldn't say we, it's I. We spent about 15 or 16 billion dollars, which was a lot bigger to us then than it is now. We spent it in the last few weeks, you know, a period of three or four weeks between Wrigley and Goldman Sachs and General. We had a terrible time, as it turned out. I mean, I, I didn't think, I didn't know whether it was going to be a good time or a bad time, but it was a really dumb time. And I wrote an article for the New York Times and Buy American. And all these things. Well, if I'd had any sense of timing and waited six months until, I think the low was in March, I think I was on CNBC maybe that day or something, but, but I totally missed that opportunity. I totally missed, you know, in March of 2020. We, we, we have not been good at timing. We've been reasonably good and figuring out when we were getting enough for our money. And we had no, had no idea when we bought anything. Well, we always hoped it would go down for a while so we could buy more, and we hoped even after we were done buying and ran out of money that if it was cheap, the company would keep buying, in effect, taking our interest up. We haven't ever timed anything. We've never figured out insights into the economy. When I was... 11 years old, March, March 12th, I guess, 1942, yeah, at, or March 11th. I bought stock when the Dow was 90, well, it was 101 in the morning. It was 99 at the end of the day, I think. And, uh, you know, now it's 34,000 or... For the past four consecutive months, we've been going through inflation with an inflation weight north of 7% for the first time since 1982. You both have experienced this before, from 1970 to 1975, at a time where your portfolio took paper losses, and yet you made some of the best investment choices of your life. Reflecting on that, my question is, if you had to pick one stock to bet on and be resilient in the inflation, which would you choose? And what specifically enables that stock to do very well and might very likely be a difficult market? Well, I'll tell you something even better than that one stock. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to one stock. But the best thing you can do is to be exceptionally good at something. If you're the best doctor in town, if you're the best lawyer in town, if you're the best whatever it may be, you know, no matter whether people are paying you with a zillion dollars are paying for that. They're going, to, they're going to give you some of what they produce in exchange for what you deliver. And 
if you're the one they pick out to do any particular activity, sing or play baseball or, or be their lawyer, whatever it may be, whatever abilities you have can't be taken away from you. They can't actually be inflated away from you. Somebody else will give you some of the wheat they produce or the cotton or whatever it may be, and they will trade you for the skill you have. So the best investment by far is anything that develops yourself. And again, it's not taxed. You know, it, it, so that's what I would do. Nobody can take away from you the talent you have. I mean, the, the, and the truth is, the world will always be willing. They'll need to do something. And some people will not have skills. And they will get less of the product of the society than somebody who has other skills. And sometimes that has something to do with education, but a good bit of the time it doesn't have anything to do with education. I mean, it, it, uh, but figure out what you'd like to be and figure out how, what you'd like to be is what you're gonna likely be good at. And, and you know, that the world will, will always need somebody on that tube to tell us what's going on. So. You know, study Becky Quick or somebody and <laughs> figure out, you know, what makes her good and and what you sort of, sort of naturally bring to the game. I mean, I could have... Who's the guy that says you got to spend 10,000 hours doing this or that? And, uh, but uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell, you know, would say just spend 10,000 hours on something. Well, I could have spent 10,000 hours trying to become a heavyweight boxer, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd have felt very good at the end of the 10,000 hours. I mean, you stumble in to what you really like doing, what you're good at, what is useful to society, and then it doesn't make any difference whether the dollar bill, you know, is now worth, in terms of the purchasing power, a cent or a half a cent or a hundredth of a cent. If you're the best doctor in town, you know, you will... They'll bring you chickens, I mean, whatever they may do, but <laughs> they can't take it away from you. And my guess is that uh, if you've come to five meetings, you know, you've got a very good future ahead of you. I mean, that, that shows it. <laughs>